Father's Day is not surprisingly yet another pagan day in Babylon's history. Babylon being these United States of America. You see, Hebrews, many of these days have the same root because they exist from the same wicked tree. So in most of these origin of these holidays that we'll do is that they're all kind of sound the same because they come from the same wicked tree. And we know that from Yah's word that he tells us that a wicked tree cannot bear righteous fruit and vice versa. Actually, let's go to that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 18. Matit Yah chapter 7. We're going to read verse 18. A good tree is unable to yield wicked fruit and a rotten tree to yield good fruit. So you see Hebrews, anything of this world be it a holiday or whatever day the world finds joy in celebrating it's not good because this world satan's world the matrix if you will is wicked and therefore it cannot do any good so we're not surprised to find out that father's day a day of this world is a pagan day it was originally called the Sky Father's Day, part of the week's celebrations leading up to the summer solstice. Now, a solstice is the longest or shortest day. So, either of the times when the sun is farthest from the equator, on or about June 21st or December 21st. Because remember, these people of today are sun worshippers. Um, that's what makes these holidays pagan. Pagan meaning the worship of the sun. So in all of these lessons about holidays, you can be sure that they'll have one thing in common. The secret worship of the sun. And just like with anything, we see that they've just changed the name once again for reasons of deception. The day was given over to celebrating the Sky Fathers. For, for providing for this human children with his rich gifts of sun and rain. Now, when we see sky fathers, when they say sky fathers, who do you think they are talking about? But if you said the gods, you are correct. Mother's Day celebrates the worship of the goddesses and Father's Day is the worship of the gods, both against Yah's commandment. We learn in Yah's word that a sin is the breaking of Yah's laws. So if it is not a law, it cannot therefore be a sin. But Yah tells us not to worship other mighty ones. These days are the worship of other mighty ones. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 57. We're going to read verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. Against whom are you sporting? Against whom do you make a wide mouth and stick out the tongue? Are you not children of transgression, falsehood, being inflamed with mighty ones under every green tree, slaying the children of the valleys under the cleft of the rocks? Among the smooth stones of the stream is your portion. They, they are your lot. Also to them you have poured the drink offering. You have offered the grain offering. Am I com confident in these? On a high and lofty mountain you have set your bed. There too you went up to make an offering. So we see we as a nation, we still sacrifice to gods, drink and slaughter for the gods. When we barbecue and drink liquor and cook on these days, we too worship the gods. Not Yah, but the gods, the angels, boys and girls, the so-called kings and queens of the heavens. Gifts of sacrificial goats and sheep recognizable by the festive ribbons bound around their necks, were supplemented with prayers for his continued guidance and the human journey towards spiritual adulthood. Several generations of Christian priests gradually attempted to neutralize the pagan rituals, or in other words, Hebrews, make safe or set apart the pagan rituals. But there's no such thing. It's a pagan ritual. How are you going to set apart witchcraft? And you see, Hebrews, this is what we've done. This is what we've done. They've taken these days that were openly satanic back in the day and now have applied new names to them with hidden ritualistic ceremonies. Instead of openly sacrificing goats with prayer to Satan, you sit around a table with cooked food and send up a prayer to God. These are satanic ceremonies. And the Sky Father, another name for Father's Day. So the passing of celebratory garlands or wreaths, garlands are wreaths, from sons to fathers was retained or kept. 
So they kept this part, little Hebrews, and re-emphasized as the central act of the great Sky Father celebration rather than the sacrifices and prayers. As part of this reinterpretation, the practice of tying ribbons was moved from the animals to the fathers and appears to be recognizably the origin of the custom of giving ties on Father's Day. So they used to tie ribbons around the necks of animals, little Hebrews, that they would sacrifice, that they would go and kill and, and, and pray up to the gods. But now today, so as to hide its satanic origin, neckties are tied around the necks of fathers. You know, we know a lot of people give their fathers neckties for Father's Day. So I'm wondering, does this mean that the father who participates in this day is participating in sort of a self-sacrifice? 